Hey, Alan Rabinowitz here for creativecow.net. You know, my good friend Jace Hansen recently asked me if After Effects and babies can coexist. Well, the jury is still out on that one. But today, my daughter Noah is going to help me find out. Say hi, Noah. Well, oh, she's a little young. Anyway, babies love bright colors and they will stare at them for long periods of time, especially if you can keep it interesting, which means that maybe I can get some work done if I can keep her entertained. So I think I'm going to make a DVD full of bright colors and animations and classical music. Yes, I am. And, uh, and I'll turn you into like a genius, like a, like, a, like a baby Einstein. Maybe I can make like a whole, a whole DVD series. What? Really? That's, that's already taken? Okay, well, anyway. To get back on point, to make these videos, I'm going to need to create some looping animations, especially looping particle animations. And in this tutorial, I'll show you how to do that so that, you know, you can create your own uh, infant entertainment DVD. Oh boy, I'm running out of time here. Create your own infant entertainment videos or, you know, something maybe like uh, lower thirds or, or, you know, looping backgrounds, which is probably a lot more practical. Sounds like fun, right? Sounds like fun. Now she's excited on the inside. Okay, before I get into it, if you aren't familiar with particle systems, check out my video explaining particle effects, which you can find in the Creative Cow Multimedia 101 podcast. It explains the concepts of particles and emitters. So, here I am in After Effects with a 10 second composition. In the end, it won't be that long, but I need some room to play with for now. I'm using a simple particle system that I added to a solid by choosing Effect, Simulation, CC Particle Systems 2. Now I've made some cosmetic changes to the look of the particle system, but they're just that, a look. With very few exceptions, you can use this looping technique that we're going to cover for almost any particle system that you've created. There are some exceptions, of course, but more or less this should work almost every time, even if your particle effect looks very different. Let me just do a quick RAM preview here so you can see what I have so far. Now I want to make this particle system a five second seamless looping animation. For that, the beginning and the end have to match up perfectly. So I'll jump over to the effects panel and there you can see that my birth rate is set to six. I'll add a keyframe with that value by clicking on the birth rate property stopwatch and then I'll hit U to reveal that keyframe in the timeline. Then I'll jump down to the timeline and I'll move down to the five second mark where I will then set the birth rate from six down to zero. Then I'll select both keyframes and I'll right click on one of them and from the pop-up I'll choose toggle hold keyframe. Let me do a quick RAM preview for this stuff so far. Whereas before my particles kept coming and coming, what I've just done here is set up an animation where particles are being created and then at the five second mark they stop being created. Now as you can see from this RAM preview, the particles don't just disappear they die off over a period of two seconds. So what we have here is an animation where there's nothing on screen at first, then over time there are particles being born and dying, and then the final particles that were created die off, leaving the composition window empty because no new particles are being added. Now the value of this first keyframe isn't nearly as important as the second keyframe's value of zero. So no matter how many particles you have on your screen, maybe this keyframe is set to 50, maybe it's set to 1000, at some point, you need the emitter to stop emitting, and to do that, you have to have a final keyframe with a value of zero. I want to point out that I'm using hold keyframes because it's also important for the emitter to just turn off and stop producing particles for this effect to work. And hold keyframes allow me to change the values without any interpolation. In other words, without the value changing over time. In this case, without the number of particles gradually decreasing from six over here down to zero at the end. By using hold keyframes, we've created a situation where a steady number of particles are being born until the five second mark when they stop being born and gradually fade off and die. Anyway, at the five second mark, frame number five seconds and zero frames, I'm going to add a layer marker by selecting the layer and hitting the asterisk key on the number pad. Then I'll duplicate the layer by hitting Control D or Command D on a Mac and I'll slide the top layer back in time so that the layer marker for the top layer is on the first frame of our animation. What we've just done here is arrange two duplicate copies of our particle system so that on the top layer, while all the particles are dying out, on the layer below it, all the particles are being born at the exact same rate. 
Now this overlap of particle birth and death will help us in creating a seamless loop. Just so you can see this, go to the five second mark and keeping your eye on the composition window, hit home on the keyboard to jump to the first frame. As you can see, the first frame and the five second mark frame are an exact match. That means that the animation, as it progresses, eventually comes back to the way it looked when it started. Now if you've watched my tutorial on creating looping fractal animations, you'll remember that I said that to create a looping animation, the first and last frame should not be a match. In order to create a seamless loop, it's the frame after the last frame that should match the first frame. Otherwise, you get one repeated frame. And if you're paying attention, you'll realize that, hey, we don't have a problem. We're already there. Remember, I'm making a five second loop and the last frame of a five second animation is not frame five seconds and zero frames. It's four seconds and 29 frames. Because remember, in After Effects, by default, the first frame is not frame one, but rather frame zero, which means that a five second video ends at four seconds and 29 frames. So we're golden. I'll set the end of the work area to 4 seconds and 29 frames by going to frame 429 and hitting N on my keyboard. A quick RAM preview and we have a looping particle emitter. Cool. Now let's just set the actual composition to the right length of 5 seconds. All we have to do is go into the composition settings by choosing composition, composition settings, and in the comp settings set the duration to 5 seconds and 0 frames. Click OK to return to the comp, and if you look, you'll see that our last frame is frame number 4 seconds and 29 frames. So now, if we do a RAM preview, we can see that we have a seamless loop. Or do we? Uh-oh, that's not right. What just happened here? Okay, so it seems that since a solid is always created at the same length as your composition, After Effects has trimmed the solid and moved it back to its original place in time, but it's messed up our animation by trimming that layer out to begin with. I'm calling this a bug, but we can work around it. Now I know that there is more than one way to handle this, but I'll show you only one of many possible solutions. I'm going to jump back in time to where I had my particle animation set up, but had not yet duplicated the layer. So I'll select my particle animation layer, and I'll choose Layer, Precompose. If you aren't familiar with pre-composing, see my two-part tutorial on nesting and pre-composing. In the dialog, I'll choose the option called Move All Attributes, and then I'll click OK. Now this layer is no longer a solid. It's a composition, and After Effects will respect its length and timing. So again, at the five second mark, add a layer marker, and then duplicate the layer, and then slide it down so that the marker is on the first frame. Then go into the composition settings and set it to a duration of five seconds and zero frames exactly as we did before and then click OK. A quick RAM preview and this time we're good. As far as how to make this animation loop over and over again, well one way to do this is to render out a QuickTime movie and then re-import it and then use the interpret footage dialog to loop it over and over again. This is the kind of thing that you would do with looping stock footage that you bought maybe from Artbeats or some other website. But better yet, since we're in After Effects and we may want to make changes to this background at any time, I'd suggest that you nest this particle composition in a new composition and then use time remapping and the loop out expression to make it loop over and over again. But hey, that falls outside the scope of this tutorial. Now some important notes. It's important to note that in my example, the property called longevity is set to two, meaning that the particles live for two seconds. Now that means that since the particles stop being born at the five second mark, by two seconds later at the seven second mark, the screen was entirely empty of particles. Now the reason that this is important is if your particles are set to live for more than five seconds, then you can't create a five second loop. The shortest your loop can ever be is the length of time your particles live any shorter and the animation won't be seamless. Particles will appear to pop out of existence because they didn't have enough time to die. Also, this tutorial assumes that your emitter is not moving around the screen. Things get more complicated if you have an animated emitter. Not by any means impossible, don't get me wrong, but it requires some extra steps that I'm not going to cover here. Finally, I know I said it at the beginning, 
but this technique should work with any particle system. Just playing around with trap code particular from Red Giant software using the preset called Snowy Knight 1, I can use the same exact technique except in this case, instead of animating the property called birth rate for the same behavior, particular uses the property called particles per second found under the emitter group of properties. So there you have it, looping particle systems for After Effects. And you know what? Not just for After Effects. With a little ingenuity, you can adapt this technique to 3D programs such as Cinema 4D and other programs as well. Anyway, I'm off to make some genius-inspiring, age-appropriate animation for my daughter. You can do with it what you will. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, and come on, you totally know you did, then check out my Creative Cow Master Series DVDs, such as my latest, After Effects The Next Level Volume 2. Or, hey, if you or your company are looking for in-depth, upfront, and personal After Effects training, then give me a holler at the address you're seeing on your screen. We can talk about on-site training and other possibilities. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.